top of the morning to you, and welcome back to Hagen's New Jersey Pip Tips, where we bring you monthly segments on New Jersey auto insurance, personal injury protection, otherwise known as Pip. It's hard to believe that spring and St. Patty's Day are right around the corner with all these winter storms. March certainly came in like a lion. Hopefully it'll leave like a lamb with some sunny days and warmer te temperatures to come. Today's topic is going to include an update on the appeal process that took effect last April 2017, an update on our upcoming event, and as always, our monthly drawing. Let's get to it. If you were involved in a motor vehicle accident in, in New Jersey, your auto insurance is supposed to pay your medical bills under your PIP benefits. Unfortunately, too often your care is denied in full or in part, and your bills are not paid correctly. Fortunately, medical providers can file arbitration over these denials, reductions, and improper or non-payment at no cost to them. As you know from our previous videos and your own experience, prior to filing an arbitration, the Department of Banking and Insurance allows insurance carriers to have mandatory appeals by regulation despite not being authorized under the statute by the legislature. If you don't follow the appeals process with the correct form, you may lose your assignment of benefit and your right to file an arbitration to get your medical bills paid. The new appeal process has been in place for almost a year now. Although I haven't heard too many complaints, there's some common hiccups that many providers are experiencing. Of course, the appeals and their forms are exhausting and overextensive, but they are what we have to live with. You can access the department's order regarding the forms and copy the forms at the Dobie's webpage, which is entitled PIP Information for Healthcare Providers, and the forms and order can be found under Uniform Internal Appeals Forms. You will only be required to file one appeal for each issue in dispute on these forms created by Dobie, along with supporting documentation. You will not be required to file a second level appeal for the same issue if the carrier continues to deny your appeal or simply ignores your appeal. Appeals are broken down into two types, a pre-service appeal and a post-service appeal. This new process, process was intended to be streamlined and more efficient. However, it's far from that. The forms are overly burdensome and the process is not uniform. Each individual insurance carrier can have their own requirements in addition to what the state has laid out. So you need to look at every single decision point review plan for each claim. And you got to stay updated on them because they will change over time and they have already just in the last year. For example, sometimes they change the location where you have to send it, whether it's the fax number or the mailing address. Uh, they often change the, the amount of days that you have into which to file the appeal, whether it's a pre-service or post-service. For each claim, they're required to send you a decision point review plan. So before you file the appeal on that individual claim, check the plan they sent you and make sure you're doing it correctly pursuant to this. Now a lot of the things are similar in terms of having to use the form and having to file within a certain amount of days for the pre-service appeal and then the final ending point of the post-service appeal. As for these hiccups, please make sure to check the individual plan. For example, some plans indicate you cannot treat the patient pending a pre-service appeal, and if you do, you lose your assignment. Although many of, these, many of the carriers have taken away this restriction, there are some plans that still have it in place. The good news is I have not seen an arbitrator enforce that restriction of losing your assignment for not waiting the appeal process because they believe as the statute is written you should avoid undue delay of treatment. The most common difficulty and or dispute seems to be using the codes for the basis of the post-service appeal. A post-service appeal is either going to be a bill level appeal at box 33 as you can see here using codes 1 through 10 on the back of the form as the basis of the appeal, specifically where the EOB has completely denied all of the services. Or there's a line level appeal at box 38 using codes A through S on the back of the form as the basis of the appeal, where they specifically reduce or deny an item or a line on the EOB. Some carriers, or some people, including insurance carriers, are mistaken that both boxes need to be filled out. 
This is incorrect. If only certain items are denied or reduced on an EOD, then you only do box 38 for the line level appeal with the appropriate codes A through S. If the whole EOB is denied, such as a coverage issue, then box 33 is the proper basis for the appeal to be filled out with the appropriate code. Another confusion is that, that the line item appeals under box 38 can be more than one code. You should list all applicable codes from A through S for each line and use commas or hyphens to list all that apply. Be specific and be accurate as possible based on the EOB's explanation for the codes to use. So depending on why they're denying or reducing it, appeal that specific issue using those codes. Don't just list A through S for every line unless they should all apply, which would be rare. Finally, make sure to fill out the forms completely. Many carriers love to deny an appeal by simply stating the appeal form is not properly and completely filled out. Please feel free to contact me at 732-722-2911 or email me at sthagenlaw at gmail.com if you have any questions, uh, if you need help with the process, or if you need a copy of the forms in an edible PDF format. The good news is the Law Offices of Sean T. Hagen LLC is here to help you through the process and to file your arbitrations at absolutely no cost to you. We can also help you with your personal injury cases and are actively retaining personal injury cases, particularly motor vehicle accidents. Make sure we have your current locations and contact information so if we have a patient in your area who needs a doctor, we can refer them right over. We also will be hosting a networking event in April with details to come out within the next week. This will include some good times, food, drink, and activities to be, again, to be announced very shortly. This will be your chance to network with other providers and attorneys who handle personal injury. And now for our monthly drawing. As you may know, we have the Hagen Professional Information Program and for everyone who sends us any type of correspondence, calls us, sends us demands for arbitration to file, any type of communication, we enter your name each month into the bowl with your ticket and we pick to uh, decide who wins a $50 gift card. Um, anyone can win, we enter everyone. If you don't win this month, you can always uh, enter next month, so keep sending those correspondences and arbitrations for demand. And so let's pick this month's winner. Dr. Ferreira at Ferreira Spine and Health. Congratulations, Pete. We'll be sure to get at your uh, gift card in the near future. For those who did not win, there's always next month, so keep sending those correspondences. Finally, I hope you enjoy this upcoming spring with the temperatures rising, we can start getting outdoors once again and enjoying the fresh air. I look forward to our continued relationship in prosperity throughout 2018. Be on our lookout for an invite for our upcoming event towards the end of April. It should be a great time and a great opportunity. If you found this video helpful, please like, share, and subscribe to the links below. As always, I'm never too busy for your kind personal injury and PIP referrals, and they're greatly appreciated. Thank you, and God bless.